Hello all. Well, it's sort of uh, cloudy, foggy, and it's freezing. It's 51 degrees. It feels like it's winter. Uh, rain is forecast starting tomorrow and again on Friday. Questionable whether we'll get anything. But let's get right over to some oil news. Okay, the cost of drilling for oil and exploration is going up close to 10.9 percent per year. Let's look at a graph. Alright, this graph is going to show you how much it costs per million barrels for a million barrels per day of oil production. Let's start in 1960. As you can see, production was pretty low. It didn't cost that much. Alright, by 1978 the price was up to almost 60 percent higher than it was in 1960. Then the cost of oil went down some and then from then on it started going up. That was 1984. It started going up to almost 70 percent and it kept going up to almost 70 percent. Then it went slightly down and then it went up again to almost 70 percent. Now let's look at the last couple years uh, up close. The last part of the graph looks like this. And this is at present right here. So the, so the cost of drilling and exploring for oil is going up and up and up and the cost that they're get the price they're getting for oil keeps staying about 110 to 111 to 106 dollars a barrel and now let's get into the reason so this is a complex issue and it's mostly my opinions so um, let's just think about what makes oil consumption go up full-time employment makes oil and oil production go up because people have more money, they drive their cars more, they buy more cars, they buy boats, they buy motorhomes, they even the rich ones buy planes and big yachts. Well, here in the US, that's no longer the case. Let me show you what's going on. The US employment figures, full-time employment is down to 18.8%. Part-time employment is up to 14.9% of what it was. Now, here's the problem. Young people don't get full-time jobs much anymore, so they no longer have the money to buy cars and drive around cruising and, and going places and visiting friends. So they're, they're either staying at home and using their mobile phones or they're walking or bicycling or using public transportation. So, because of this, driving in the U.S. is way, way down. That's just an example. Uh, there are many places around the planet that are having troubles. Europe, the U Ukraine, Egypt, the Middle East are all having trouble keeping money flowing through GDP. Most everyone's employment seems to be going either down or stagnating. Now what does that have to do with the oil companies? Let me show you. Okay, we're just talking crude oil here. Conventional crude oil production is like that. It's going down. Now unconventional oil production is sort of flattening off. Some people say it's slightly going up, some say it's slightly going down, so it's somewhere in there. So there doesn't seem to be any new crude oil production really coming online. It's stagnant. To get more oil, the oil companies are having to drill down deeper and deeper and deeper into the planet to get the smaller and smaller little pieces of oil here and there. They're also fracking, trying to get some of this little oil that's out underneath the ground at very high depths, several, a couple miles to, to 10 miles. Uh, they're also 
So the expenditure for drilling for oil keeps going up and up while the amount of oil stays stagnant or slightly falling off as I've said in previous videos. The oil companies are having to are having to drill in more severe environments such as farther north in the cold of the uh, Arctic Ocean up near Alaska and further out into the ocean and deeper. So they're, they're just having to use a lot more energy and a lot more production, any oil out at all. Now, here's the big one. Because so many oil companies are public, meaning that they're on the stock exchange, they have to pay the stockholders a dividend for the uh, cost of the stocks. So the problem here is that the oil companies need a hundred plus dollars per barrel to break even, but they also have to, to pay their stockholders. And because oil production is only getting around 110 to 111 to 108, 106 dollars a barrel, it's not enough to get enough profit to pay off the shareholders. So what they're doing now is they're pulling out of the hard to reach oil areas. Deep sea oil drilling rigs are now being sold off. Even Shell Oil is selling off a lot of their assets so that they can pay the dividends to their shareholders. The problem here is is that you get another one of those places where it's not worth drilling for oil because it costs more per barrel than you can get per barrel. And that's what we're seeing right now. And this is what I've been talking about all along is where we meet that X. Where will it be where you pay? It takes a full barrel of oil to get a barrel out and it costs too much to get it out. So you're just spinning, getting no oil, you're not getting any new fresh oil to supply the market and most of the money is being spent on just production and paying off the shareholders. So we'll have to see how this works and what happens. Profitability for the oil companies is down between 10 and 20 percent per company. So in the next few years or so I think we're going to see a crunch and the uh, crunch will be there's no money and not only that but OPEC used to be able to control how much oil would uh, be released into the, the economy. Now OPEC doesn't really have any control because everyone who is drilling for oil needs to continue to continuously drill for oil and have oil continuously pumping up to the ground to make any profit at all. So if OPEC was to tell everybody to stop production, all they do is just put everybody out of, out of uh, business and then they would really be short on oil and supplies. So it's going to be getting very interesting. Uh, will we adjust? Will we just keep driving less and buying less cars and more efficient ways of transportation? That will happen. But sooner or later, we're going to cross that X and then it's all downhill from then on. So let's look at the latest graph on where we are on oil supply. Now let's look at, well, drop the pen. These pens are, well anyway. Okay, so we know that oil, crude, crude oil, conventional oil looks something like this, right? Uh, around 20, uh, 2012 is where this is going. This is uh, 2005, which was the peak of conventional crude oil. Now they've managed to keep from going down this peak by adding unconventional oil, which looks something like that at this time. These are the tar sands, the uh, fracking oil, the deep sea oil, that type of thing has been able to keep us off serious peak oil. But all these type of oils, can, uh, oil extractions, are, are starting to wane and fade out because it just doesn't pay to spend that kind of money to get so little oil that you actually get to use. So right now it looks like for every barrel it takes three quarters of a barrel to get that barrel out of the ground processed and into gasoline. There isn't much oil that you're really getting anymore. So I suspect that this graph here will start doing this. 
All we did was delay what was obviously going to come. Okay, this eraser has hit the ground too many times. I've just it's sometimes you just get mad and you just you just want to rip rip it. And I'm since we have lots of eraser, I'm replacing this falling to the floor eraser. Okay, we got a new eraser. This feels so much better than that old worn out thing. And if this pen falls on the ground, it's going to be up here, huh? Okay, we're going to talk about the North Sea production. That's oil and gas. That's all fuel liquid. Now, in the North Sea, uh, most they get about 50 to 60 percent of all Europe's oil and gas comes from the North Sea. Let's look at how they're doing. They're supposed to be one of the up-and-coming oil production areas. In 1970, they were at zero. These are a uh, million barrels per day, so it's uh, at zero. Then, all the way till 1985, it got up to about three and a half million barrels per day. Then it started to weaken down in 1988. But then it had a surge uh, and hit the peak at 2000 at almost five million barrels per day. It was about 4.9 or 4.8. Since then, it has gone all the way down to one and a half million barrels per day. They're trying to crank it up some, but they're not finding all that much compared to what they used to have. So the, the big production areas aren't quite producing like they were hoping to. And the cost of doing business in the North Sea is costing too high. And a lot of companies are now thinking of backing out of the North Sea. All right, with a new eraser and a pen that's still working and the board staying on the wall, we'll continue the, these videos. And we appreciate all the comments and the, uh, the likes and the dislikes and the pluses and the minuses and the whole thing. Uh, we still are having trouble reading some of the comments. They say they have a certain amount of comments and then you look and they're not there. But we are getting com we're getting about 80% of all the comments. So some of them we don't see, but other people do. So go ahead and give your comments and what you think. All this oil news is just my personal opinion of the research I've done. So, with a new eraser, we'll see you guys next time.